this is how I would ideally like my six weeks to go. Um, <laughs> really, don't go that way. Uh, kick off. The day after kickoff, we go to the kickoff, and then we go back to school, and we talk about the game, and we read the rules of the game, and we talk about different strategies, and then we spend three to five days just discussing and building prototypes. I strongly encourage you to do prototyping. Um, it's not something that's typically easy to do. It takes some ingenuity, and if you have good mentors, they'll help you with it. But build some stuff out of plywood or um, little design, little straws and toothpicks. Prototype some things to see if they're going to work before you just commit yourself to this design on day one and then you find out three weeks later that that's not going to be a very effective strategy. So spend a couple days talking about ideas. It's one of the funner parts of the build season where you get to people get to be creative, throw their ideas out there, discuss those ideas. Well, this is the pros and cons of this idea compared to the pros and cons of this strategy. To me, that's one of the funner parts of the build season because it's just kind of throwing things out there and discussing, well, we should do it like this, you know, we should do it like that, or that would be good. Can we combine those two ideas somehow? Um, that's the fun part to me. So don't overlook res research and design ideas. Don't just be like, okay, day one, we think this is a good model, this is what our mechanism should be, and go for it. Spend a few days talking about the pros and cons of different designs. Um, weeks two to four, go to work, start setting that schedule for the kids, put them to work, build on the drivetrain and whatnot, keep them focused with deadlines and whatnot, or else they'll start just goofing off in your room. Um, week five, <laughs> this is ambitious, the programmers need at least one week with the robot, because they're going to be working during two to four weeks, they're going to be working on you know, what programming is, teaching each other, um, especially with LabVIEW being introduced this year, that's going to be a big challenge for our kids. My kids have always programmed in C++. Now they're doing LabVIEW. It's going to be new. They're going to have to learn that. They're not only have to, my veteran kids have to learn it, but then teach it to our rookie kids. Um, so the programmers <coughs> don't really have enough to do this year, but they really do need a good solid week with something workable. Uh, it's some kind of part of the robot that works, the drivetrain, the mechanism, to make sure it does what they think it's going to do, or decide on what kind of operator interface you're going to have. Are you going to have two joysticks? Are you going to have one joystick? Or are you going to use the uh, Xbox controller? So you have to decide that, and the programmers need time to figure those things out and debug. Uh, week six, <laughs> I want this to happen this year, but the week six is usually like one day. Um, <laughs> debugging and driver practice. You, it's really nice if your kids can have time practice driving the robot. Um, aviation has practice builds. They have last year still set up here. They plan on having practice builds here this year where you can come. You can bring two practice builds this year, which is going to be great, where you can bring your team down here, practice driving around, practice playing the game. Because if you're only going to go to one regional, it's like practicing all year, doing all this training stuff to go then drive the robot for one day or two days. So it's really nice if they can come, have some fun, practice driving, practice playing the game. Um, and then you have to debug and most likely something will break and you'll need to fix it. Uh, last year we got our robot done the day before it was supposed to crate. So we thought we were great and we came down here the day before we put it in a box and we blew our transmission. And so we put our robot in a crate, broken. Um, but it was good, it was really good that we got to come here for just those couple hours because we found a major design flaw in our drive on our turn motors. Um, we were side loading the shaft, which then was side, um, side loading our planetary transmission, which then ate up all the gears inside our transmission. So it was good that we broke it because we, then we put it in the box broken. We ordered another bearing block that we needed. We brought those parts down into Portland with us and we were able to fix it within a couple hours. So just having that one day of driver practice showed us a huge design flaw that we hadn't even thought about and we were able to fix it and still be competitive. <laughs> um, build season is still a time to teach. Don't think you're going to teach those kids everything they need to know before build season. You are doing more teaching during that time than anything else because that's maybe the first time that a kid gets actually in there and use the drill or use the power saw or whatnot. So still spend time teaching them stuff. Um, Last year, like a couple kids weren't doing anything, so I took them outside and I showed them how to measure the coefficient of restitution of the big giant balls 
anyone knows what the heck that is. It's basically the bounciness. So we, we made a mechanism that dropped the ball and we measured the height and how bouncy it was. And we never really used that information for anything, but it was fun. They designed an experiment and they learned something. Um, actually, I think we did use it. One of the programmer kids was making like a computer model of the game. And so then he put that into his game, like the ball would bounce this much. So then in his little computer game, when the ball hit a wall, it actually bounced off with a different <coughs> velocity. So I think it did get used, but then no one ever really used the game. But again, it's keeping him busy and he designed something. Um, promoting attitude. This is pretty good. You get to be creative. You get to teach the kids how to be creative. Um, that's why I chose to go with a student-led team. It lets them have ownership and be creative and not scared to like raise their hand because in class, that's the thing that gets me is kids won't raise their hand and ask questions or I think this. I mean, there's no wrong answer, especially in engineering. There's just bad designs. <laughs> it either works or it doesn't work. And it's good to have the conversation why it works or why it doesn't. What makes something good? What makes something bad? Um, teamwork, and that leads right into teamwork and communication. They need to work together, be creative, and then discuss why one idea is good and why one idea is bad and work together to make those decisions. Um, gracious professionalism, as Kevin was saying, this is like the cornerstone of FIRST. It's absolutely huge. Uh, we broke our transmission, like I said. We called, we got to get on FIRST WA team list. Um, you have access to all the mentors' emails. I sent one email out, and when I showed up in Portland, I had four transmissions waiting for me from other teams. Um, that's what gracious professionalism is all about. We were in a tight spot. I sent one email out, four teams willing to help me, bring me, you know, those transmissions aren't cheap, but you accrue extra parts, and they were willing to donate those extra parts to my team to get me out of that tight spot so we could compete. Um, that's just one example. Um, pride in their work, it's their bot, it should look good, it should work good. They're gonna want those things to happen all by themselves if they have some ownership. Uh, I really don't jump in until I think some seem disastrous is about to happen or someone's about to get hurt. Um, or if you really, they're, they're going off on some tangent and you're like, no, that's really not going to work and this is why. And you point those things out to them. Or you don't hold the motor in your hand before you turn it on because <laughs> it's going to spin and it's going to break your wrist. Uh, they'll, they'll do, they will try to do stupid stuff and you got to keep your eye out for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I pretty much let them do whatever they want. If they decide on a design and I maybe think they should go a different way, it's not my robot. It's theirs. And if they don't compete well, they don't compete well. But it's still a learning process. So that's that.